So I will pre be presenting, it's a brief presentation and it's uh, an overview of where we are with enough invasive and office teething site and some introduction. So this is the outline. So I'll just have a slide for the malaria burden in, uh, in the Eastern Mediterranean region, a, a slide for introducing the uh, Asian malaria vector, which will be covered by our other colleagues, our, our speakers today. Uh, detection of Anopheles stephensi outside the its, its established range, threat of the spread of Anopheles stephensi, and what was the WHO response to that, and MRO networks and collaboration with partners towards strengthening capacity on vector surveillance and control. So this slide is just presenting uh, the malaria burden in our region. So we have, if you see the, the map on the right, uh, we have uh, six, eight countries which are malaria endemic. Eight of them are at the stage of burden reduction. Yeah, and, um, Hello. Please make uh, mute. Mute. Please. Because there are some sound coming make a problem. Khalid. And these are... Okay, go ahead. So we have burden reduction stage countries, we have elimination stage countries, and we have those which are uh, certified to certified and those which are malaria-free prevention of re-establishment. So the burden reduction uh, stage are six countries. Uh, these are Afghanistan, Djibouti, uh, Pakistan, uh, Somalia, Sudan, and Yemen. And then we have, and the majority of the uh, parasite, malaria parasite transmitted is Plasmodium falciparum uh, in the Horn of Africa countries and the region. And then we have also Plasmodium vivax, uh, mainly in Central Asia and Iran, in uh, Pakistan, Afghanistan, and Iran. Uh, so we have also the countries which are at the elimination stage, and these are uh, Iran, which has uh, reported zero indigenous cases for more than three years. Uh, and we have Saudi Arabia, which recently, uh, which reported in 2019, 38 indigenous cases. So this year, based on the WHO malaria report 2020, an estimated 5 million cases were reported uh, in 2019. And I have also in the, on the left, the graph or the pie chart, just showing the shared uh, share of estimated malaria cases uh, from the countries. The malaria vectors, the principal vector, is Anopheles arabiensis, mainly in the Horn of Africa uh, and in, uh, in Yemen and Saudi Arabia. And for the other countries, uh, the main in the Central Asia, these are the Anopheles culicifaces and Salata, Anopheles tetensai, and also some uh, additional secondary uh, vectors, malaria vectors. So our talk today is, our session today is focused on Anopheles tetensai. So Anopheles tetensai is an Asian malaria vector. So its distribution is in the Middle East uh, to the Indian subcontinent in China. It is a highly competent vector of both Plasmodium falciparum and Plasmodium vivax. It's an efficient vector of urban malaria. And this is the challenge we have if it's invasive in countries where it's not, uh, where it can cause uh, urban malaria. There's biological forms of Anopheles tetensai, and this will be covered uh, by our colleagues, uh, by uh, Dr. Ali in his uh, uh, lecture. An important vector, it's also an important vector in malaria transmission in Afghanistan, Iran, and recently has been has established in Djibouti. So this is just a, a map, a screenshot from the uh, malaria, malaria threats map, which you saw last uh, week. Uh, so if you see the red dots are the invasive, we can see that they're in the Horn of Africa and also in Sri Lanka. And the green dots are where it is native, where it's considered native. So the next uh, slides, I will go through the detection of uh, Anopheles tetensai as an invasive vector in the Horn of Africa and in, other, and in Sri Lanka. So it was first detected in 2012 in Djibouti. Uh, and at that time, Djibouti was actually pre-elimination stage. So uh, it was 24 confirmed cases and then suddenly the cases increased and they found Anopheles tetensai. And this is a published data, published paper for the first record of the Asian malaria vector. Anopheles tetensai and its possible role in resurgence of malaria. So between uh, 2013 and 2014, there were a high number of increased uh, number of cases and two epidemics. So Anopheles tetensai became established as a malaria vector in Djibouti. And then we have uh, another paper which published uh, five years uh, of surveillance following the first detection of Anopheles tetensai. 
So in Offaly Stephen's site between from 2013 to 2016 uh, was found in sentinel sites in Djibouti city or Djiboutiville and its density increased in 2017. And it was incriminated with plasmodium phosphorum and plasmodium vivex uh, of about 3.1%. And the breeding sites were identified in artificial, uh, as artificial water containers. Uh, then following that, it was detected in 2016 in Ethiopia. So this is a published uh, paper by uh, Carter et al. Uh, and uh, authors and co-authors. And these are just photos of the type of breeding sites they found. And this will be for, uh, further elaborated by Dr. Tamar in, in the next session. Uh, then it was discovered in, it was uh, detected in uh, Sri Lanka and they were found in breeding, in breeding wells in Manama Island. So uh, following that in 2019, it was detected in Sudan, uh, in the Eastern uh, part of Sudan. So this is again a screenshot from the malaria threats map where it's been the sites have been uploaded. Uh, so we've it was found in two states in the Red Sea states, uh, and then also found in uh, Gadara state. Then in 2019 also uh, it was detected in Somalia in Puntland, and also in 2020 it was detected in Somalia uh, Somaliland. And this is again a screenshot from the malaria threats map where it's been the information has been uploaded. So this is just photos of uh, types of breeding sites or, or larval habitats where the Anopheles stephen site has been found. So in Sudan, we can, we can see there's also, there's also old AC. So with Aedes aegypti, it was found breeding in this old AC and also in uh, septic tanks and cement tanks. In Djibouti, there was in water storage containers and barrels and also in, in rooms inside houses which were flooding uh, and these actually this was inside the house where it's it was occupied by people so in this room here let me just get the sorry so in, in this room here there were uh, Aedes aegypti and also uh, Anopheles uh, stephensi. In Somalia, it was found in, in these uh, brick or mud, mud uh, water storage containers called Berkets. Then, so what was the WHO response to this threat of spread of Anopheles stephensi? So uh, the emergence of Anopheles stephensi outside the typical distribution prompted uh, a technical consultation on its spread in June 2019. This was organized by GMP. Uh, the technical experts recommended that WHO should monitor the spread of this vector and should be available to the public through the malaria threats map, which was uh, explained to us uh, last week by Lucia, by Dr. Lucia. And also there was a publication of vector alerts, uh, uh, which is a document that urges, that has recommendations, a list of recommendations and urges WHO member states and partners, especially those in and around the Horn of Africa and the Republic of Sudan, and surrounding geographical areas and in Sri Lanka to take immediate action and also other lists of uh, recommendations for mosquito control and monitoring and evaluation of interventions. So WHO recommends to conduct surveillance <clears throat> for the Anopheles Stephens site in urban and peri-urban areas in addition to routine uh, surveillance in rural areas to report any new detection of Anopheles Stephens site to WHO and there's a form that we can uh, that you can upload and then <clears throat> submit and also to conduct insecticide resistant assays. And these should be uh, submitted to WHO or reported to WHO. Also to preserve the specimens that were collected for molecular anal analysis to confirm the morphological identification and to have uh, pinned voucher specimens as reference. In the vector alert, there's also a figure uh, for uh, differentiating between the Anopheles gambi sensilata and Anopheles stephensi. And this will be further elaborated by Dr. Seth, who's with us from the CDC. Uh, also WHO recommends for control that the international health regulations should enforce to ensure, should be enforced to ensure points of entry are free of vectors and minimize the risk of any further spread. Uh, this is, could be done through environmental management at port, street, uh, departing, uh, departing aircrafts and ships to remove insects, and also to enact or introduce bylaws to regulate water storage practices and construction to avoid the creation of potential breeding sites. The construction sites 
they would have a, a tank filled with water to use for the construction or for a brick factory, and this would be left and could be a potential breeding site. Also treatment of larval sites with WHO pre-qualified chemical or biological larva sites following WHO guidelines and management of larval sites in urban and peri-urban environments where this vector is already, uh, is already there, native, to reduce the vector numbers. <clears throat> Removal of active potential larval sites where feasible fill, uh, filled in, in, uh, in of disused wells, modification of sites to prevent overposition and installation of sealed lids uh, to water storage. Uh, larval source management is not currently a WHO recommended option. It's a supplementary uh, intervention to the core uh, vector control intervention, which is a long lasting insecticidal nets and IRS. And this was uh, also uh, presented to us uh, by Dr. Jennifer. And you can look at the link and download. And the, also the guidelines is already in the OneDrive uh, folder that we shared with you. And should, there should be mapping of remaining potential larval sites and to inspect them for larvae and deploy the two core uh, vector control interventions where feasible. So again, just to show you the vector alert, and there's a figure, again, uh, Dr. Seth will further elaborate on this and show you the differentiating, uh, differentiating these two mosquitoes where they're very similar, but there's the, uh, diagnostic features that can be differentiated, can be used to differentiate them. And also we've translated the vector alert into an Arabic uh, version. So this is the malaria threats map. This is uh, to access the data of the Anopheles uh, Stephensi. So uh, a new theme, the GMP uh, added this new theme, which is the invasive vector species. Uh, the spread of Anopheles mosquito vector species and their establishment in ecosystems to which they are not native poses a potential threat to the control and elimination of malaria. And you can access this malaria threats map uh, in this link. And also you, you also have a case study that you have to do. So this is again a screenshot of the R region. So you can filter through the, this filter. You can filter by region, and you can just get the the focus on the region. For example, this is the Anopheles, uh, sorry, the Eastern Mediterranean region, where the red dots are where it's invasive, and the Horn of Africa, the countries in the Horn of Africa, and the green dots where it's native. Again, uh, just highlighting the importance of the global vector control uh, response uh, and our regional plan of action for implementation of this. Uh, this is uh, highlighted because uh, Anopheles stephensi is found co-occurrence with Aedes aegypti. And so this is with similar larval habitats. So this provides an opportunity for integrated surveillance and control against both malaria and arboviruses. Uh, As you remember, the pillars of the global vector control response is built on the IVM uh, principles. And these are the, uh, the links. Uh, a potential channel, a challenge is the insecticide resistance in Anopheles stephensi. It's widespread. It's the leading malaria vector in terms of developing insecticide resistance. And this is a paper, Evolution of Insecticide Resistance and its Mechanisms in Anopheles stephensi in the WHO East Mediterranean region. It was uh, published by our colleagues in Iran. And uh, Dr. Ali will, will present this also in his uh, lecture. And uh, this is another paper by Yared Etel, and the co-author is uh, Tamar Carter, who's with us. And this is uh, publishing insecticide resistance Anopheles, uh, of Anopheles stephensi in Anopheles stephensi in Somalia, in Somali region, Eastern Ethiopia. So what is EMRO doing? EMRO is, is strengthening, currently strengthening capacity on vector surveillance and control. So <clears throat> how has it been uh, doing this? So establishing network coordinated by GMP, with Afro and for regular communication and information sharing between NMCPs and partners. EMRO networking and collaborating with partners who are strengthening the vector surveillance, monitoring and response to the invasive and office defense side through the joint implementation and gen generating local evidence and building capacity of national and subnational vector control staff in the Horn of Africa. And these are the partners, these are the partners, the NEA Singapore, uh, at the CDC in Atlanta, Liverpool School of Tropical Medicine and Baylor University. Thank you very much.